Amen, amen, amen. So, so this morning, um, we're still going to be praying, but I'll just share a thing or two with us before we continue praying. Um, First Kings, chapter three, from verse seven to thirteen, is a long read, but I'm just going to, um, read for us. First Kings, chapter three, from verse seven to thirteen, it says now. Oh Lord, my God, I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. You have made your servant king instead of David, my father. For I am but a lad in wisdom and experience. I know not how to go in, begin, or come in, finish. Your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen, a great people who cannot be counted for multitude. So give your servant an understanding mind and a hearing heart to judge your people, that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge and rule this your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. God said to him, because you have asked this and have not asked for long life or for riches, nor for the lives of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to recognize what is just and right. Behold, I have done as you as you asked. I have given you a wise designing mind so that no one before you was your equal, nor shall any rise after you equal to you. I have also given you what you have not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings equal to all your deeds. So this is this is um what happened between Solomon and God. This was Solomon asking asking God for for wisdom. I'm going to also read for us First Kings chapter five. First Kings chapter five. It's um from verse from verse four. Let me let me read from verse four. I think I read it earlier, but I'm just going to read it again. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, let me read from verse from verse ten. Let me read from verse ten. Or from verse 8, 1 Kings 5, verse 8, sorry. And he says, And here I'm sent to Solomon, saying, I have considered the things. This is Solomon now on seat. That was Solomon, you know, praying and having that conversation with God about his rule. So this is Solomon on seat, saying, and, and, and here I'm sent to Solomon, saying, I have considered the things for which you sent me. I will do all you wish concerning the cedar and cypress timber my servants shall bring the logs down from lebanon to the sea make them into rafts and float them by sea to the place that you direct i'll have them released there and you shall take them away you shall fulfill my desire by providing food for my household so hiram gave solomon all the cedar and cypress trees he desired and Solomon gave Hiram 20,000 measures of wheat for food for his household and 20 measures of pure beaten oil. He gave this to Hiram yearly. Verse 12, the Lord gave Solomon wisdom as he promised him. And there was peace between Hiram and Solomon and they made a treaty. So I just want to say to us this morning that wisdom is tangible. Wisdom can actually be seen. Wisdom can can actually be heard. Wisdom is a mindset. Wisdom is God giving us the grace, the ability to know what to do, and then the grace to carry it out in a way that, excuse me, in a way that brings the result that glorifies God and the result that we hoped for. So Solomon in this place, Solomon in this place was asking God for wisdom. But then we'll see how wisdom played out in his life. Wisdom was him making decisions. <clears throat> Excuse me. Wisdom was him giving the leaders what they wanted. That was certain people who could have caused him to have issues. Certain people who could have made it hard for him to reign, for him to lead the people the way that he's supposed to lead. Someone is asking for the Bible verse. It's First Kings chapter 5 from verse 7. Okay, First Kings 5 from verse 6 to 11, from verse 6 to 12. And then, um, and then we also read First Kings 
chapter 5 from verse 3. Uh, First Kings chapter 3 from verse 7 to 13. So Solomon asked for wisdom and this wisdom was tangible because, you know, sometimes there are certain prayers that we pray that we don't even have to pray if we had wisdom, if we had wisdom to discern, if we had wisdom to know how to talk to people, if we had wisdom to know what to do, if we had wisdom not to hold on to things. Solomon here was not holding on to things. Hiram had made a request of or, or, or from him he knew that God had given him riches. He knew that God had given him, promised him certain things. So he wasn't going around feeling like in my rule and in my reign, I'm going to hurt things. I'm not going to give this and give that. He had wisdom. He had the fear of God. He had the knowing of the presence of God, the consciousness of him. And that made him do certain okay. things. Because sometimes we ask for wisdom and we go away, you know, from the place of asking God for wisdom. And then we now still continue to pray certain things that require our wisdom. And I'll just um, cite an example. There was a time where I would literally always pray for peace in my marriage. Lord, I need peace. Lord, I need peace. Lord, I need peace. And I remember our coming to, you know, even our prayer platform. And when people want to prophesy over me, they say, peace, peace, peace in your marriage, please. I'm just like, Lord, this peace, I'm praying for it. I'm, I'm praying for it, but I'm not seeing it the way I'm supposed to. Then at, at a point, the prayer chain and people will just pray over me and say wisdom. They'll give people word and everybody will have like so much word, you know, for them. Um, you know, God is doing this and God is doing that and God is doing amazing things. And me, they'll just say, I pray wisdom for you. And I'm just like, now, wow, wisdom. Okay. Just that one simple thing. And for a long time, there was even this time I was offended. Like, can't people see something better for my life? Why do they always pray wisdom for me? Why do people just pray wisdom? Is it that they cannot see what they're supposed to see? Or is it that I'm not wise at all or something? But then I realized that wisdom is the principal thing. I realized that wisdom, when we have wisdom, we don't even have to fret. We don't even have to worry. Wisdom will make us know, like this place said, the difference between good and bad. Wisdom will help us know that if I if I don't give in this situation, that will be bad. That will lead to results that are not good for me. Wisdom will make me know that if I speak at this time, even though I have a good intention, even though what I want to say is true, even though what I want to say is valid, it's going to yield a result that will take my peace away. It's going to yield a result that will not favor me tomorrow and next tomorrow. And for certain things I'm trying to achieve. So let's say I'm trying to achieve harmony. Let's say I'm trying to get my staff to work a certain way. Let's say I'm trying to get certain results when I'm working with people, whether it's in my family, it's in my marriage, you know, even for the president with people like in the case of Solomon here. Wisdom is that I'm so aligned in my speech. Wisdom is that I'm so aligned in my character. Wisdom is that I'm aligned in my actions that I get the result I'm, I'm asking for. Because sometimes we're like, I have to get this result. So we talk, 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 talk. And then we see the opposite of what it is that we're asking for. Wisdom does not demand that we are always in control with our own understanding. Wisdom is the presence of God with us, telling us by time what we need to know, what we need to do so that we can have result. So we can see in the case of Solomon that after he asked for wisdom, he now started to do certain things. So he wasn't thinking, this person wants something, I'm going to walk because I have good soldiers, because God is with me, because I can take the land. He was thinking, how do I make peace? Can I give them this measure of food? Can I give them this portion of food? Can I build what I have here so that they can come see? Because sometimes in our family, in our business, Wherever we are, God wants us to build what people can come to see. Sometimes in our personal life, God wants us to build in such a way that your spouse will look at you and say, oh, wow, she's wise, so I can listen to her. Oh, he's wise, I can listen to her. The way she reacts, the way that she talks, the way she carries herself. The Bible says of the, of the Proverbs 31 woman that when she opens her mouth to speak, that is graceful and is wise words. And the Bible says in Proverbs that wise words, when we speak wise words, that is so appealing to the ear and i literally had heard, heard a teacher this week say that when when your spouse doesn't always listen to you that there's a wisdom gap there that you need to block so it's not your spouse it's you that need wisdom to be able to know what 
what they need to listen to and how to present what it is that you're saying for, for the person to listen. I don't know why I'm dwelling on this marriage matter, but even in the case of Esther, Esther was the, the wife of the president in quotes. She could have just gone and said, oh, please, this is what needs to happen. After all, it affects me. After all, you are the president. How dare you take such a rule that, that, and, and take such a decision that affects me? But she knew to go to God. She knew to ask for wisdom. Then she could go before the king. And, and I studied how Esther put the things that she put. So we're looking at Solomon in the case of ruling and reigning in such a way that wisdom brought him results. And we're even looking at a woman who went before her husband and then she was able to, you know, she kept appealing to him. She kept saying, okay, we're not going to have this conversation at this time. Can we do this at dinner? Can we set up for this? Can we have some sort of atmosphere for this? Some people will say it's overrated, but wisdom is not overrated. Those who say it's overrated, you know, sometimes check the results that you're getting and she said oh let's let's create an atmosphere can we have this atmosphere where we have the conversation and then she was able to create a date with the with her husband she was not treating her husband as my husband she was treating him as one who is king and because of that she could get her result even when she went to him she still said it uh, oh if it please you this is what I, I i have you know this is my my request this is my complaint the Bible records not once, but I think about twice or three times, she still had to bring it up. So this man was not even listening the way that she hoped, but she was patient. Wisdom is knowing how to be patient. Wisdom is knowing how to um, apply the fruit of the spirit that is already available in you. Wisdom is not praying for the fruit of the spirit because by virtue of the Holy Spirit in us, we already have the fruit of the spirit. Wisdom is now being in a place where we apply those fruits, where we know that I have grace to be quiet. I have grace to talk. I have grace to, you know, um, 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 do things the certain way. I have grace to set up the structure. I have grace to, to, to just know how to do things. So we're going to be praying this morning for wisdom for ourselves, whether as husbands, as wives, as intercessors, because even at, as this new reign is coming where, you know, a new president is stepping in, we're going to need wisdom to pray. We're going to need wisdom to know what to ask God, to know what to pray, to know how to position even in the place of prayer. Our president is going to need wisdom to be able to do certain things, you know, the president that is uh, that our president coming in, our incoming president, if we know him, we'll know that he has built quite a number of things. We look at many things and he owns a lot of things. And if you, you wonder what wisdom did he use to build those things, we may say, yes, it's the wisdom of the world, but there's shy wisdom there. Whether it's the wisdom of the world or it's the wisdom of God. But this man has built certain things that God can by himself convert this wisdom. And when he uses it or in, in ruling Nigeria, he will build. Yes, he may eat. Yes, he may do this and do that. But we pray over him. We declare and declare over him that he's a builder. He's a builder. God did not say, Solomon, you only have wisdom. God said, yes, prosperity and riches will come to you. But this, our president will be a builder. And that's our prayer that we have prayed this morning. But for us, we're going to be praying for ourselves that whether as intercessors, whether it's in our home, whether it's in our businesses, whether it's our siblings, with our in-laws, with whoever it is, wisdom, wisdom can give us so much result. There, there are times where you will have a very, very, very difficult, difficult um, 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 in-law and all you need is just wisdom to tell you to be humble. All you need is wisdom to tell you to keep quiet, that you should not be so opinionated. All you need is wisdom to check on them and know that if you start to um, drag with them, that it only makes the matter worse. All you need is wisdom to know how to talk about them with your spouse so that you're not, you're not at, at in that place where your spouse is looking at you and saying, as much as you're my wife, you just never, you don't even like my, my family. So you get certain body languages and certain results that you don't even know where the root is coming from. Wisdom is with our staff, that we know how to value them, that we know how to love them, that we know when to say, we know when to, when to allow them, you know, 
to be themselves. We know how to even use certain things, you know, whether it's those that have the Bezalel anointing or it's those that have different things, knowing that God has brought these people to me for me to be able to also use what he has put in them. There are certain things that we pray so much for that all we need is wisdom, just wisdom to say, I'm going to have self-control. Wisdom to say, mm, I'm going to suffer long in this situation. I have the grace to suffer long. So suffering may not be in the in the uh, mind of everybody. Suffering may not be popular. Suffering may not be on Instagram. It may not be on WhatsApp. It may not be on social media. But the Bible talks about long suffering. The Bible talks about how Jesus learned to obedience by the things that suffer. The Bible says that I will partake of um, persecution and that if I lose anything in the process, I gain eternal life and I gain those things back. So God is a restorer. Sometimes wisdom is just knowing how to allow God be God in us, how to allow God have the results he wants through us. So we're going to be praying this morning for a minute or two. And we're going to be saying, Lord, I need wisdom. Show me, even show me the places where there is a wisdom gap in my life. Show me the places where I'm so self-righteous. I'm so, I want it to be like this. I want my husband to be like this. I want my business to be like this. I want this. I hope for this. I want, and we are pushing, even in our relationship with God, that it has to be like this. Show me places that I need to surrender. Show me places where wisdom is lacking, that that's the root of my pain the root of my problem, the root of my not getting the result and walking in the fullness of your promises. Can we pray and say, Lord, open my eyes to see. And as I see, give me wisdom to navigate. In the name of Jesus, can we just you know, unmute if we're in a place that we can unmute and begin to ask the Lord for wisdom, for wisdom, for wisdom. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we ask you for wisdom this morning. If we can unmute, just unmute and let's ask the Lord for wisdom, wisdom, wisdom for life, wisdom for our purpose, wisdom for assignment, wisdom for our marriage, wisdom as intercessors, wisdom for our staff, wisdom for our employers, in the name of Jesus, wisdom for our bosses, wisdom for our children. Lord, this morning we ask for your wisdom, wisdom that causes peace. We Wisdom that causes progress and prosperity. In the name of Jesus, we ask for your wisdom. Thank you, Jesus, for wisdom. Thank you, Jesus, for wisdom. Rada daya la baha. Rega de le brado sukati le gedu shakati. Elang kadi katina maha. We ask for wisdom that is profitable. We ask for wisdom that is profitable, not a wisdom that stresses us, not a self wise wise situation. In the name of Jesus, we ask for wisdom that is profitable. A kabaya nana suka le gedi bra adidi. It may just be your child. Sometimes you wonder how why your child acts a certain way. Why is my child so stubborn? Why is my child so selfish? Sometimes it's wisdom. It's just wisdom. Excuse me. It's just wisdom to know how to talk to them, to manage their emotions. It's wisdom to know how to align yourself so that they can see and learn. But I will thank you for wisdom this morning. Lord, we ask for wisdom this morning. Sometimes it's at your place of work. There are things that are due to you, but you just need wisdom, wisdom. Joseph had wisdom. And because of that, he went from prison to, to the palace. Can we ask for wisdom that promotes, wisdom that brings us out of certain situations to the place God has planned for us, wisdom that lifts up.
Ela kayanda sikati rege deketai rege dosha rege dina rege daya ligadi. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Anana kabrahada. Thank you, God, for wisdom. You said if we ask, that we receive. You said if we ask, that we receive. This morning we ask. In the name of Jesus, that we have wisdom, that we have wisdom, that we have wisdom. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Finally, I'm just going to read for us James, James chapter 3 from verse 17 to 18. It says that James 3, 17 to 18, it says, But the wisdom from above is always pure. It's filled with peace. It's considerate and teachable. It is filled with love, never displays prejudice, prejudice or hypocrisy in any form. It, all, it always bears the beautiful harvest of righteousness. Good seeds of wisdom's fruit will be planted with peaceful acts by those who cherish making peace. So we can see that there is a relationship between peace and wisdom. That's why um, Solomon could enjoy peace and rest on every side. So this is... Um, Something we need to take home and say, God, are there places, even ask ourselves sincere questions, are there places that I feel like I'm wise yet? Okay, so the Bible verse is James chapter 3 from verse 17 to 18. I read the Passion Translation. James chapter 3 from verse 17 to 18. So let's check ourselves. It, it profits us that we check ourselves, that people don't always, we don't always have to get into conflict or get into situations where the situation and the people are telling us how we are not wise. We can do the um, um, survey ourselves. We can search ourselves. The Bible says we should check ourselves at every time to know if we're still in Christ. So we can check ourselves and say, am I teachable? Am I a peacemaker? Not peace like swallow your words kind of peace where you don't express yourself. But do I have wisdom to express myself? Every time I express myself, do I get into a confrontation with people? Do I get into, do I listen when people talk to me? Whether it's at my place of work, it's at my home, it's, you know, wherever it may be. Do I know how to listen? When I listen, am I, am I boiling inside before I can even say a word? Am I judgmental? Do I criticize people and then I say, I'm just being sarcastic. I'm just playing with you. Do we have that kind of attitude where we are teachable? where we are filled with love, where we are considerate, where we are pure, where we don't, we don't, um, where our seeds are, are seeds of wisdom. We are bearing fruit and these fruits are fruits of wisdom. Wisdom will push us forward. Wisdom sometimes, it feels slow. Wisdom will cost us because wisdom will let you part with things. Wisdom will let you be stepped on and you wait for God to talk for you or to tell you when to talk. Wisdom is costly, but wisdom is profitable to direct. Wisdom is paying attention to God's presence every time. I was telling my kids yesterday night about Nehemiah and I saw something about Nehemiah, how he had talked to God. And even though he was going to talk to the king, when he got before the king, he didn't say, oh, I've spoken to God. But he still, Bible says that he prayed under his breath that God, please help me. And because of the prayer that he prayed and he told God what he wanted, he was more, um, he relied more on God than on the king. And because of that, God's generous hand was with him and he had the result he wanted. Wisdom is deferring to God, even when we know what to do. So we need to check, am I walking in my own wisdom? You know, my siblings knew me to be wise, my mother knows I'm wise my father knows I'm wise like I'm wise God told me I'm wise but are we really walking in the wisdom that he planned for us to when we check ourselves and see in fact sometimes what may I do is I just pray I don't even assume that I know the fact that I'm not getting results in a certain place I'm just like God just even show me already because I don't need to be checking if I'm wise here if I'm wise it will be working so just start, start showing me how do I need to apply wisdom and feel free to ask God questions on what the process will be, even without wisdom. Because sometimes it will, what God will instruct you when you're, you're asking for wisdom at every point when you actually start playing it out will sometimes look like you won't get the result. So ask God that this thing you're telling me to do, how will it work? How will it influence this person? God will show you the hearts of people. God will show you how it influences them, how it will get the result you're looking for. God will make it easy for you to obey him. So I pray for us in the name of Jesus, even for myself, for each 
worker force, that we have wisdom that is profitable, that we're peaceful people. When you're a peaceful person, the Bible says that the person who closes his mouth, maybe not in these words, but when you even close your mouth, that that when you close your mouth, you know, and you're not a troublesome person, that you'll be assumed to be a wise person. So in the name of Jesus, we have wisdom that works. We have wisdom that is not of this world, but the wisdom that gives us the results, especially that aligns with what God has planned for us in the name of Jesus. We have wisdom that is peaceful. We have a wisdom that makes people around us cooperate with us, just like they did with Solomon to bring results. And our president has wisdom that works, wisdom that brings the results that will cause Nigerians to be to, to be grateful, to be thankful to God, to glorify God. Wisdom that causes righteousness to be the fruit even around us in the name of Jesus. And I pray for us that as we ask God deep questions about our state of wisdom and how to apply it with the people around us and our environment, that he will answer us, that we'll hear clearly what to do and that it will not be a one-time event, but it will be a journey for us. It will be a walk for us. It will be consistent that every time we'll defer to him and he will show us what to do and we receive grace to do them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for joining this morning. We have um, another prayer watch by 9 a.m. We have by 12 p.m., 3 p.m., 6 p.m. And I think we have to, we have Bible study by now, right? So please join you with the with the link that's join you with the link that um that you used to join this one and let's just continue to pray for our nation and continue to just you know intercede and i think um, sometimes at the end of those prayers if you have a prayer request you can just ask that you be prayed for god bless you god bless you thank you for joining have a beautiful day bye everyone Oh, sorry. Today is Sister Wumi's birthday. Please, can we just wish her happy birthday? Today is Sister Wumi's birthday. Please, can we just wish her happy birthday before we leave? If you cannot meet, just say happy birthday to her. Happy birthday, Sister Wumi. Happy birthday. Happy God birthday. bless you. Happy You're blessed. Birthday, Sister God bless you. God bless you. Let's see. Let's see a prayer for her in our closet. You're blessed, you're prosperous in Jesus' name. This marks the beginning of a new dawn for you. You're enriched on all sides. You bear fruit on all sides. You will know God's presence more than ever before in Jesus' name. You walk in wisdom. God bless you, sister Omi. Okay, bye everyone.